I could not be more excited for you to be joining me to, for today's video. This is what I have been trying to do for a couple of years now. I actually was going through my stash a few weeks back and I came across a mitten I had abandoned. It didn't look like this at all. I was trying to do the Scandinavian style mitten. I've tried several times and I've failed several times. But when this twill yarn, this is from We Crochet, this twill fingering yarn, this is perfect. It's 183 yards for 50 grams. Um, it's a super wash merino, 100% super wash merino, so super warm, cozy. When this showed up in the mail, I actually had other plans for it. But the second I felt it, for some reason, I just think knowing that abandoned mitten, I thought I would try one more time and see if I could accomplish what I really wanted to do. Because I've seen a lot of beautiful Scandinavian knit mittens, but I really just wanted to create a crochet mimic because that's what I'm all about. And I did it and I love it and it's absolutely beautiful. So for this mitten, I am using three different colors. Um, the, so feel free to choose the colors you would like. I'm going to include a link for these on the pattern. I am going to be using a size E or F, sorry, F furls hook. And this is their alpha series. It's one of my favorites. It's definitely one I like for working these small stitches. You'll need a tapestry needle. You will also need a stitch marker because this is worked continuous. And if you would like your printed chart. Now there are two in the pattern because one is for a left hand with that's this. And in this video, I will be showing you how to work up the right hand chart. Now these have a ribbed edge, but we're going to do this last. I find it easiest to work the body of the mitten without the rib. We could start with the rib, but we're going to come back and do it later. I think it's a more seamless way to do it. Um, this is a one size fits all. It fits me and I have some room. It fits my husband just fine. I really wanted something that was, you know, unique all the way around. So you've got a cute little egg corn here. We've got another one of those, you know, tree leaves here. I, 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 I can't lie. I'm really proud of myself for finally figuring this out. It's too bad I don't live in snow <laughs> and I live in Florida, but I am going to find excuses to wear this crochet Scandinavian style mitten. And so let's get started with the right hand since pairs are always best. Now for this mitten, as I've said, we will be working in the round without joining. It's going to be a continuous work. To start, take your color A, this is the color A I have chosen, and we are going to chain 48. Now without twisting your chain, go ahead and single crochet, joining for that very first stitch. And I am even going to mark this very first stitch just because I always think it's a great idea. It's less confusion if we just throw in a stitch marker. Let me even get a smaller stitch marker than that for this. And now we are going to single crochet in the color A for each stitch around. I just want to note that while these are tiny stitches because we are using a smaller hook, we don't want to tighten our tension so much that the stitches are too tight for us to get into for the next round. The reason being is for, this is round one, we're simply doing single crochet stitches all the way around. And I do move slower with these smaller stitches, I do have to admit. But for round two, we will start to work in split single crochet. Essentially, it's a knit look stitch where we're working into almost like the center of the single crochet stitch. We're kind of splitting it differently than we normally do. Ah, look, I worked one too tight. And so when we're working in the split single crochet, it's important to have a looser tension so that in the following rounds, you can get into that stitch as easily as possible. One tip when you're using working in the split single crochet is when you yarn over and you pull up, pull this up to be the height of a single crochet stitch before you yarn over and complete it. It gives your stitch a little bit more breathing room and it's easier to get into the next time for the split stitch. So I've got my first 
a round of single crochet stitches and I'm about to work round two, which to note on these charts, we will always work from right to left since we're working in the round continuously. Each round you'll come from the right side working to the left. But since these are such small stitches, I would like to take this opportunity to show you what we will be doing next on big stitches because they are much easier to see. So for a split stitch, I've done a couple here. Normally when we do a single crochet, we would go through the top two loops, these like V's, and we would complete that stitch. But instead of inserting our hook where we normally do, if you'll see this front V, we're going to be inserting between the front V and also going between the upside down V on the back. Yarn over and pull it up up a loop, but we want to pull that loop up to the height of a single crochet. This is where it's really crucial to pull this loop up. If you don't, that's where this will get super frustrating. Now we will yarn over and complete that split stitch. See how it sits inside the previous single crochet. So one more time, I'm going to insert in between that V and sometimes I kind of have to work it through there and then through the V in the back. The more you practice this, the easier it is pull up a loop and complete the stitch. But let's talk changing colors because as you can see in our chart, we are changing colors a lot. So we're still going to use the method of changing colors that we would on a single crochet. We're just using it for these split stitches. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull up that loop. But before I complete this stitch, if the next stitch is in a different color, I'm going to go ahead and complete this stitch with the new color. So now I have my V stitch from previous. Sometimes I'll kind of tug on that first color, make it look nice, but not too tight. And now I'm going to work in my second color by working a V stitch, a split single crochet, pulling up that loop. And then this will look really nice and seamless when we're changing colors. So one more time, back, which is exactly what we want to do a lot on this chart. I will grab my first color and carry it along the back. We don't want these to be too tight, but if you want to see the inside of my mitten, it is all carried yarn. It looks almost knit the way there's just so many floats inside here. So that's what we will be doing. And if I'm changing colors again, I'm going to bring up my first color. And before I complete this stitch, I will yarn over and pull that new color through and then continue on. So this is how the entire mitten stitches are worked. And it is a lot of switching back and forth. This is not a beginner color work project for sure. If this is your first color work project, I would skip on over to my blog and try something a little bit simpler that doesn't use split stitches and doesn't use such a tiny yarn with so many color changes within one project. Unless you're super adventurous, then go you because sometimes I have seen beginners do some amazing things. So this is how we will be working our split stitches. And as you can see, as we keep going, these are really nice color changes. They're starting to look knit because we're working in between the V is on the single crochet. It is a bit thicker of a fabric, but it's great for a mitten. So this is how we will be working those split single crochets. And the more rows you do, the easier it gets. I feel like when we're first starting out and we have this small amount of mitten to work with, it does feel a bit fickly because it's so tiny. But once you start building up a few more rows, I find you get in a groove, it goes a little bit faster, but anticipate these first few rows feeling slow. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to even sugarcoat that. I feel like a sloth on these first few rows and that's okay. I am just going to enjoy the process. So for going back to this mitten for this first stitch, I've inserted my hook in between the stitch. Probably can't see it. It's so small. Um, for my first split single crochet, and now I'm going to change yarn. I've marked that first stitch in the round, always mark that first stitch in the round, 
And now I'm going to do my next color. And the first few rounds, especially, especially the second round, the one I'm currently on, will feel a bit difficult just simply because it's our first round of split stitches. Round three will feel a little bit easier. So I have one stitch in my color A, one stitch in my color B. I'm switching colors here. And now I'm going to do two in color A and simply follow that chart for every single round. Um, work this up. I'm not going to do these on screen because A, they're so small. We have this example to kind of play off of. And B, it's pretty boring to watch me do this crochet like a sloth. So I want you to work this way in the round continuously until row 19. When we have completed row 19, come back for row 20 because we're going to talk about the thumb. So now I have worked this up and I am starting row 20. So on this chart for row 20, I want to give you a few options on how to do the thumb. The thumb stitches will be these stitches right here. The first time I accomplished this, I did it in a foundation single crochet while also color changing. I'm not gonna lie, it is not an easy concept to do it that way. It's a very advanced method to do a foundation single crochet while also changing colors as you go. The thumb is kind of hidden down in here. So I truly feel that it's not necessary to do it this way, but if you really want everything to match up and you want to do it that way, feel free. I want to give you a little bit of an easier way, however, to do these stitches. And here's what we can do. We can foundation single crochet this in one single color or even chain and skip this, these stitches right here. Just chain to the other side. Chain as many stitches that are the thumb stitches. The reason why is it really won't make a different in fit. It will be just, just fine. So I want to show you how to do that. My first stitch in this round will be in gray. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my stitch marker. Kind of shift things around a little bit here. So I just finished round 19 and my first stitch in round 20 will be in gray. So here's my first stitch of round 20. We're still working on those split stitches for the rest of this. And then for the rest of the stitches, I simply think that doing a foundation single crochet in one solid color or just chaining is fine. To do the foundation, I use this, this last stitch I just used again to start the foundation. So it's just a way to leave that hole opened, but also be able to start foundation single crocheting because I'll need that loop to keep going. So this is how I would do it. However, we do want to have our yarn, our other color of yarn, our color B, join us on the other side. So to do that, it might be easiest just to simply fasten off because I don't, you don't really want a long, that long of a strand, that long of a carry near the thumb, it's not the best idea. It's better to fasten off the color B and rejoin on the other side of the thumb. Now, if you don't want to fasten off because you absolutely hate weaving in ends, but I just want to add, it's not a bad idea to have a um, strand on this side because as, the, as we finish out the thumb, there might be some gaps on the edges that we can use the strand to also so in, in to minimize those gaps. But as we go, if you want to, because you really don't want to carry, you can try to catch, catch that strand. It's not an easy thing to do, but you could try to catch that strand within the foundation single crochet and carry it across that way. But I also want to know, I think that the easiest, less, least stressful way to do this is simply to chain the thumb stitches, skip the thumb stitches to leave an opening here. So these I believe are 12 stitches. Let me double check that really quick. Yes, 12 stitches. So I would chain 12, skip 12, and then start my next stitch. 
So my very next stitch will also be in gray. So I'm simply going to start by skipping 12 and then working a split stitch in that next stitch and I'll split stitch for three. And now that it's time for me to change colors, this is where I still think this is the easiest way, even though we're weaving in some ends. Fasten off and go ahead and, and leave this for later. I would leave it for later because we might use it to, to leave in. So if you want to, you can just tuck it in out of your way, kind of pull it to the bottom and then simply rejoin. I, I really think this is the least stressful way to do it. I've experimented with each way and I find this to be the least stressful. And then I'll just keep doing my color work. Um, I'll work all my way all the way around. And then once I work this round, I just wanna come back and show you how to handle the chain stitches. All right, so now I'm back around to my first stitch in the round. And I still am uh, making sure that I use a stitch marker um, each time I go around, simply because it is difficult to remember where I'm at. So I would throw a stitch marker into this first stitch since we're working continuously. And I'm already going to be changing colors for the second stitch in the round. So the first stitch in the round is gray. I haven't finished it because I'm going to change colors here. And the thing about this is we're working into chains, which is a little bit different because we are still gonna be doing our color work. But what we'll want to do is simply work into our chains using single crochet. We obviously cannot split stitch into these chains by using the split stitch. So for this round, we're, we're simply going to continue to change colors and just work into those chain stitches while working from our chart. And then the next round, so on round 22, Am I right? Yes. On round 22, then we'll sim then all these stitches will go back to being worked in a split stitch all the way around. Sorry, my yarn is splitting there. I don't know. There we go. So I'm working the three, the three in color B right now. I haven't had any issues with splitting yarn, of course, until I come on camera and I'm not really able to pay as much attention. I like to work into the bottom humps. That's why I'm kind of struggling right there. I really love the look of like trying to work into those bottom humps on this. All right, so there's my three and then I'm simply going to change to the next color, which is my color C. And as you can see, we're just working these as regular single crochet, but then on the next round, we will work them as split stitches and that will get us back on track and we've created a hole for the thumb, which the hole for the thumb, we will come back and work later. So we're simply just gonna keep working in the round from our chart. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do this thumb later and we're going to continue to work this up. So just like this left-hand mitten, I want you to keep on going, working this all the way up until we get to the decrease row, which is row 46. So work up through row 45 from the chart, just like you kind of see on this mirrored image. And then we're gonna come back when we start decreasing towards the center of the mitten. So I will see you back, have fun with this color work. And it's really fun to watch this image work up row by row. Now that I have worked and I am on row 45, I'm right here where we find our first no stitch spaces on the chart. In the written pattern, it's going to go line by line and tell you exactly where to decrease. But if you are following the chart, we will be decreasing, the, these no stitch actually indicate a decrease on each side here. So I wanna show you how to do that. Once I get to here, so I'm on this stitch and now I'm going to do this stitch where I'm going to single crochet two split stitches together and then I will do that again and then work the rest of the row. So let me show you how to do that. To single crochet these two split stitches together, I'm going to first insert into the first split stitch like I normally would and pull up a loop and then I'm going to go directly into the next one 
like I do with a split stitch, we're not working any normal single crochets here. We're keeping on with that split stitch. So I've got two loops in the center of the next two split stitches and I'll simply yarn over and pull through all of the loops on the hook. And then I will do that again for the next two stitches. Now when decreasing with split stitches, you do want to make sure that you're not having too loose of a tension. Yes, you want to get into that stitch for the next round, but we don't want a lot of holes and gaps when we're decreasing. And then there's another decrease. And then I will continue on with the rest of my row, which actually I'm going to back up there because since I'm changing colors right before I finish that single cr crochet two slip, split stitches together, I would change the color of my yarn. And now I'm simply going to keep working the rest of this round and I want to come back on the next round where we also decrease again. Apologize, I just realized on the previous part I said I was on row 45. That was incorrect. I just finished working row 46 with those two decreases and now we're going to be doing row 47 where we will have even more decreases. We'll, we will be decreasing four times now on every single round. So starting on round 47, I'm at the beginning of the round over here. I'm going to start off by doing a single crochet, two split stitches together. And then I'm going to continue working on until I get across these stitches and to my next decrease. And now I'm at this next decrease where I'm going to be doing two decreases. So I will single crochet the two split stitches together. And this is why I want to show you this again is note that we are working the stitches from the row before, the round before that were split stitch decreases. So I'm simply going to go into the center of that split stitch decrease, like as much as possible, get into the center of that previous decrease and then finish your current decrease. So I'll do that again. I'm going to come over here and this is where I'm saying if I let this go pretty loose and I decrease, there's going to be a hole. So right here is where I want to keep this tension on my hook as I insert into this next part. I could even insert to that next and kind of pull down just a little, but then when I bring up these loops, I do want these loops to continue to be loose enough to get into the next time. And now I will yarn over and pull through all three and then I will keep on going. And actually, once again, I keep not glancing at my chart. I'm changing colors. So I would yarn over and pull through all three with the new color and then keep on going. So just keep doing that round and round following my color work chart or the written instructions. And what we're doing right now is we're decreasing our mitten for the fingers. So it will be decreasing on each side. You can already see even just after those decreases how it starts to go in. So we're just bringing this in together. Also, I want to note, you'll probably notice that this has a slant to it. Most of the time crochet does. This one I find isn't too aggressive of a slant that it can mostly be blocked out simply by kind of getting those stitches lined up, kind of getting that fabric laid flat. And if you block it, it will stay more vertical in the end. So don't stress about the stitches, the slants right now. We'll take care of that during blocking. Continue to work around and around, working those decreases as shown on the chart or in the written pattern. And I will show you how we get to the very last round and close that hole on top. Now that I've worked the last round at the very top of the mitten, I should have six stitches that are just kind of hanging out. I've gone ahead and I have fastened off my yarn. I'm going to put my hook in here so that it's a bit easier for me to pull the yellow color yarn into the mitten so that I can weave it in later. I'll flip it inside out and I will weave that in when I weave in my other ends as well. Let's see if I get that in there. Now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and this gray yarn or whatever yarn that is the main color at the end of the mitten 
and I'm going to weave in this opening because we have a hole right here. So to do this, insert your hook into the front loop of the very next stitch and then continue that all the way around for the remaining six stitches. And now go ahead and pull that together. It pulls that hole in, but you'll notice we've still got a few gaps hanging out here. So I like to just take my needle, stitch through those, and kind of pull it in a bit more so that we don't have, I'm just going through some of these stitches here, so that it really pulls the top of the mitten together and you don't see any gaps or holes. It's just kind of doing a nice finish. And then once you have that done, it is time to move on to the thumb. Now for the thumb, we have a new chart. The thumb has 24 stitches. We have 12 stitches here that are unworked and then our 12 chain stitches up here or if you did a foundation single crochet, we will be using those 12 stitches as well. There might be gaps on the sides after we begin this, but that's also why it's helpful to use these strands of yarn on the inside after we're done to just stitch together the gaps on the side. Now the other reason why I have chosen to do the cuff part last, like on this other mitten, is because when we're working the thumb, a lot of times to get started, I need my hand to easily be inside the mitten unrestricted. So without that cuff, it makes it a little bit easier. So for the thumb, for either hand, we will insert our hook into that very first stitch on the bottom right. That is our first stitch in the row. So I'm going to grab my color B, which is my yellow. And I'm just going to do a slip stitch just to get started, but we will still be working this in a continuous round without joining. Now for this first part, we can definitely work into these first stitches as if they are split stitches because they, they are, they're just ready to be worked. So I'm already needing to change colors. So I will do so and don't forget on the thumb, just like you would do on the body, we don't want to carry for more than two to three stitches. So be sure to catch that yarn as you go because you don't want long strands of yarn on the back of your work that will catch your fingers. So like here, I would simply lay that over so I could catch it so that I'm still continuing those nice carries and floats on the back. So I will work these stitches around, working the first 12 stitches on this bottom part. And now that I have completed those 12 stitches for the first part of this thumb, I will simply continue on with stitch number 13 working around this opening. So I'm just going to turn here and put my ends, just kind of want to pull these ends, these beginning ends down in here so they're out of my way. And I will change colors of yarn because stitch number 13 is a different color, just that stitch down. And then I'm simply going to come onto this side and now I'm going to work the 12 stitches up here on this other side, just working in the round around this opening. All right, now that I have worked these 24 stitches, it's time to go on to road, round two and start again, which is actually for this pattern, a repeat of round one. But once again, we are working continuous, and I'm changing colors here, we are working continuous around on the thumb just as we did on the mitten. So if you have a stitch marker to mark this very first stitch, it's never a bad idea because it, you know, it can be difficult to keep track of your stitches. And then we just continue on with the chart. So we're just working this around and around in the same way we did the whole mitten, but we're just doing a smaller segment for the thumb. And then as you get to the top, you'll do the decreases just as we did for the top of the mitten. And you'll close the top of the thumb in the same way we close this where we fasten off and loop through those stitches and pull them together to close the hole. 
So go ahead and work the thumb in the rounds using the chart or the written pattern, whichever is your preferred method. And you're just simply going to build this thumb up, decrease, and then close that opening hole. Now I want to talk next about the ribbing since it's also another important part. And I'm going to just set this thumb aside so that I can do so. When it comes to the ribbing, we are going to first find, and I would finish your thumb before you do the ribbing, but I just wanted to show you for sake of my saving time and getting dinner cooked tonight, that we will start by, I like to find, we don't really have a seam, but like on the side, I always like seams to be on the side of something. So what would be the side of your hand? We're gonna try to hide a seam in here, but it will be pretty hidden anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. And I am going to chain 14. And now that I've chained 14, I am going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and across. So I will have 13 slip stitches down these chains. Now that I have 13 slip stitches, I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch two stitches from the edge of the mitten, from the bottom of the mitten, and then I'm going to turn. Now when I turn, now we're going to be working back down the 13 slip stitches that we just did, but from now on, we will only be working in the back loops only. And when we are working our way back up the chain, we are going to skip the body stitches. So the two that we just did on the body, we are going to skip and we're going to go to the next stitch in the back loop only. And then we're going to continue to slip stitch the remaining 12 for a total of 13 slip stitches. And now that we have 13 slip stitches again, we are going to turn chain one. That's our turning chain. It does not count as a stitch. And working in the back loops only, for this ribbing, it's the back loops only, we will slip stitch 13 stitches. So now it's just going to be repeats of these two rows where we're going to slip 13 stitches and then slip stitch two onto the body, turn, skip the two on the body, slip stitch the 13 stitches, turn, chain one, and do it again. So it's just back and forth and back and forth doing these slip stitches, which creates a really nice um, cuff ribbing that, that fits well. I, I know the slip stitches, sometimes people hate the slip stitches because they might take longer. I don't mind them. And I think they're worth having the stretchiness and the nice um, texture. I just, it looks knit. I absolutely love it. So work this all the way around the bottom of the mitten. And when you get back to this point, I'll go through how to join this starting edge to the ending edge. All right, now that I have done the ribbing all the way around the bottom part of this mitten, it is time to join. To do this, we will be joining the row that we just finished, so our last row, with our first row. First, we will insert our hook into the back loop of the row we're working on and then we will insert our hook into the loop on the first row and slip stitch those together. And then we will simply complete that for the 13 stitches all the way down, just joining that as a nice easy seam. Now, once we get to the end here, we can go ahead and fasten off and weave in that end. And then our mittens are complete once we get all those ends weaved in. So really quick, I just want to show you how fun this is. I love the way that this turned out. I love that they match. How cute is that? I'm gonna go ahead and put them on because I'm so excited to see these together finally. So the squirrels face each other. That is so cute. This is definitely the, the um, true to Scandinavian style mittens. We've got a lot of beautiful color work going on here. It's just absolutely fantastic and so much fun. I hope you enjoy this project and I think this might be something I do again 
in the future. This was so much fun. I could see me making more pairs of these with simply different color work. So this video, if I do go on and make more, they will be done in such a similar way that this video would work for all the other styles as well to walk you through each step. I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did and you enjoy these beautiful mittens, which are truly a work of art. Come back again another day for another project.